hey loves welcome or welcome back to my channel if you are new here my name is faith today guys i'll be checking out candice owens as she reacts to insane work detox and without much ado let's see what candice owens has for us in this video i am not on tiktok i have a very strict tiktok policy i have decided that if i'm ever going to join tiktok I'm going to wear a blue wig and I'm going to be the opposite of Candace Owens. Tell me what you think. And I'm just going to be super woke and talk trash about conservatives all the time. So it's going to be my alter ego. You're privileged. And I don't know what her name's going to be, but she's going to really hate Candace Owens. Many people ask me, how do you use they, them pronouns for a singular person? Well, it's really easy. All you have to do is use it the same way that you would talk about a group of people. So for example, I, Addison, use they, them pronouns. In that case, you talk about me like this. I know Addison. They are amazing. Their dress and their hair are amazing. Really? And I'm so proud to know them. Hmm. Now, a fun fact about they, them pronouns in your mind. is that they've been used in a singular context for centuries. Even going back to Shakespearean times, there's actual documentation and literature using they and them in singular contexts. But if that still doesn't convince you to use they, them pronoun, I'll leave you with this piece of information. Our language is constantly changing and adapting. Your We're head. evolving to find new terms and language to self-identify. So get with the times. Don't be an asshole. Okay, they, them, Addison, Very Rose. I mean, I don't really want to say that. I just sometimes think that we have to hit the reset button on humanity and start over. I also have this strange urge to meet everyone's parents. Like, I just want to know who raised him. Exactly. Are they? How who raised them? Raised? That's what I want to know. Like, how did we get here? Like, somebody's parents did not do a good enough job <laughs> if this is what your child is committed to on the internet. It's just who raised them, they. I took my trans daughter to see her pediatrician for the first time since she has come out as trans. I called ahead to give them a heads up and they assured me everything would be okay. Um, when I got there, it was, it was not okay. When we brought up the subject of puberty blockers, which we were just asking for information at this point, the doctor said, oh, I do not have any trans patients and I don't know anything about that. But then proceeded to ask questions such as, have you researched people who regret transitioning? Good advice from the doctor. No. No, I haven't. Because that's not really my concern right now. My concern is to concern. make sure my child doesn't turn into a statistic and unalive herself because she's not being loved and validated. Oh. What's so we're finding a new doctor. Then? Honestly, this one makes me super upset because in this scenario, the doctor should have probably called Child Protective Services um, a child. Like saying saying that there's a child who thinks it's trans is like saying there's a dog that thinks it's vegan. You know who's making the decision. Children don't think like this. Um, so there's an unstable parent who is forcing upon their child, maybe because they think it shows that they're virtuous. Like, look, I'm accepting and I'm a great parent because my child wants puberty blockers. But in reality, that's what the parent wants. Um, so good on the doctor for making, you know, I guess, kind of edging them in, in the right direction by saying, have you heard of trans regret? But the fact that this is a child, uh, there was, I mean, when I was growing up, no child knew what a trans was. Nobody thought about that. Like, so mm -hmm. the fact that this child is young enough that they're at a pediatrician um, talking about puberty blockers means that there is a mother that needs to be removed from the care of that child. Mm -hmm. I've spoken exactly. to people that do have trans regret. Um, particularly Walt Heyer came on my show. I've had him multiple times on various shows. And the statistics that she probably needs to be paying most attention to uh, are the ones about trans regret. And it is usually because, um, as Walt Heyer told me, because they're forced into making a decision uh, because you have an entire ecosystem of people, the parents, the doctors that are complicit and making them make a radical decision that in the end will ruin their lives. You know, your child will not be able to procreate. I can't even imagine putting a small child on puberty blockers. That means that, this, that means the age of this child she's talking about, this child has not even gone through puberty yet. And they're trying to talk, you know, they're trying to discuss blocking that puberty from taking place. I mean, this, what you're looking at is Imagine. worse than a radical. You can be a radical unto thyself. This woman is harming a child. And this TikTok account should be removed. This woman should be investigated. But that would all be happening in a sane world. I wear a mask to school. I wear a mask to school. 
Hi ho the Dario, I wear a mask to school. It helps to keep me safe. It helps to keep me safe. Hi ho the Dario, it helps to keep me safe. It keeps my friends safe. It keeps my friends safe. Hi ho the Dario, it keeps my friends safe. And let me see a hooray! Put your hands up in the air! Like the, the kids are not singing along Is because they're not song? enjoying the song and they're not enjoying wearing a mask and you're creepy for trying to make this into a fun song. I mean, it, it again, it just, it hurts my heart to see children being mm -hmm. abused. As, as funny as you want to find this like insane teacher, like we are now suddenly in an era in society where we're just watching child abuse take place and whether it's because you're it's always under the guise of health like trans children it's health it's, it's all about their health no it's not it's about unstable adults that are forcing children perfectly great children to make decisions about their lives masking children it's about health no it's obviously not about health since we know that less than 500 children have died from covid and those 500 children by the way had comorbidities like terminal cancer right and they're counting them as covid deaths so um this is just what happens when society to me uh is just on the wrong trajectory and i i mean i hope eventually those babies are freed i hate seeing stuff like this it just it hurts my heart why does it matter oh it doesn't matter to you i'm so i mean but to me i'm a male okay okay so what are you so i can call you a sir or ma'am what are you what would you assume looking at me what are you what would you assume looking at me I assume that you're a man. Okay? <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay? <laughs> Thank you. Whatever. There's mm -hmm. nothing I can say about that that's not going to get me in trouble on YouTube, so I'm just going to have a nice laugh and <laughs> move on. I'm going to say this really because I don't insane. think enough people are. All if the vaccine weakness. was dangerous, they would have rolled it out in black and brown poor communities first. Not the billionaires, not every single living U.S. president, not every single U.S. governor, every single one. Um, it would have been the poor people first. <laughs> so. I don't know what she's talking about. It literally was the poor people first. They remember all of the initiatives. They were like, we should let black and brown people get the uh, shot first, especially I think it was in Maine or Vermont where they were actually trying to put in place policies to encourage black people to get it first. It's just that black people um, were a bit wiser uh, to the corruption of the FDA and the CDC, given the history of the Tuskegee experiments and things of that nature that have taken place where, you know, people have, the government has said they've tried to help black and brown people first and it has turned out so well for black and brown people um so she doesn't know what she's talking about um she's just talking about all the people that got the shot on camera and i don't even know how real or authentic any of that stuff was so uh yeah they tried they just failed yes chairs let's talk about chairs uh full pun intended chairs are the biggest issue in the fat community um the amount of public spaces like doctor's offices malls what the f ever places that have seating restaurants etc never ever have accessible seating some places just have stools or some places just have armed small dinky looking chairs as a fat person if you have never ever <laughs> done the following things if you have never looked at a picture of a restaurant on Google Maps to try and figure out if the seating would be accessible to your size, <laughs> if you've never broken a chair in a public space especially, mm -hmm. um, if you've never had to second guess whether or not it was okay to sit down in the chairs provided to you, if you've never had a panic attack at school because you couldn't fit into the goddamn chair desk situation, then you don't deal with fat phobia at the same level that the rest of us do. And this is just one example. There are a plethora of other examples I could give you. But this one is really, really important. Oh, the oppression of chairs, man. See, TikTok Candace would totally agree with him and be like, yes, we have to stop having chairs. I'm sure a guy like him would really want to stand the whole time and not be able to sit at all. Um, yeah, I mean, this is just more of the crazy. The fat 
acceptance movement has no limits. It really does have no limits. Like at no point has it ever occurred to him that he could lose weight and maybe be able to fit into one of those chairs a little bit better. Instead, we have to get rid of chairs, mm -hmm. which is going to be really unfortunate for the people that need them like him. Wow, you guys, that was such an interesting one. And the last guy that spoke, he actually had no point because why do you have to start complaining about chairs when you can go and simply lose weight and walk yourself to a better body shape? I don't know why he keeps talking about people would not understand. Nobody understands. There are no exceptions for very obese people. If you are tired of embarrassing yourself in public, just simply go and work out and let me know how you feel about this video it was such an interesting one candice owen is effortlessly funny and i love listening to her this was so so good i really had fun reacting to this video and i'll see you guys in the next video bye guys